Well, this was a very interesting update. Going into what we're going to go into today, which is going to be patch notes, tech news, and just related benchmarks that go into what is the driver from the 445 series of NVIDIA. The 87 installment is very interesting, but it's not playing well with someone, and that's Windows. Let me just give you a really quick leap into our benchmarks before we get into the news of what's going to be happening for the game ready drivers my name is mac here at the macgyver 7th channel and today we're going to be covering those drivers that are going to be our release notes for today but let's go ahead and jump into our benchmarks real fast so when you see a score like this it looks pretty freaking amazing right so as we take a closer score look at what's going down on our port royale test for cinebench not but for just our normal 3d mark test and just the gpu and what is going down for just literally those tensor cores you know everything's really focused on that it's not too bad and especially with before the windows update this was really good but check this out when we go tit for tat you can see that this was the post from the last update that we did. Now let's go ahead and dive into what ends up happening right here. You're just like, whoa, that's a huge reduction. That's the same update from last time. The only thing that changed was me installing the Windows update. That is a huge drastic. You're losing literally 100 points of performance. So, you know, understand that sometimes, you know, it's not always you're going to be your graphic driver that's at hand and a lot of times it's windows so let's look at what ends up blossoming past this this is benchmarks right before we get into the news well it does get to some improvements so you can definitely see that this driver if it was tuned with the windows update not being like kind of crappy you'd probably be seeing some scores roughly about 150 give or take i would take a guess at that point for some like nice ray tracing technology you definitely can see why I dove into that first, just because I wanted to point out that Windows does play a big part into your performance in FPS. It's, it's kind of a shame. AMD, um, I'm pretty sure that freaking like Intel, as they become more matured onto the market, as well as, you know, all the other, you know, people that throw around pixels like gangsters. But looking at past that situation on a Mafia Pixels, we have a game ready driver for as far as what we've been seeing in improvement. So let's go ahead and dive into what our patch notes and we'll get into the very end of the rest of the DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 of if this is an improvement and if you should install this quite yet or not. So some of the cool highlights that ended up coming for the game ready driver was Minecraft and the RTX beta. Um, that's pretty cool. You know, it's like they're coming conditioning more and more into the light styles of what that game's looking like and it's come a long way quite frankly until today's um, kind of like polish over and reskinned and that might maybe be an issue of why they kind of pushed it up even though if we're looking at a bad Windows update for as far as what's destroying the performance. As you look at the situation for Call of Duty and the campaign remastered for number two, that's definitely become more of an accessible portion as well as Saint Row and the third remastered. So there's a lot of remasters that basically came out directly inside of that situation. Uh, SnowRunners also made the list for as far as the optimization and profiling and bug fixes. Now for as far as what the game ready driver and the new features and what it changes, there are some things that we need to go over for as far as the experience you're going to be having. Now first and foremost, you might run into some issues when you open up your... Um, your GeForce experience uh, to the 3.20.3.63, it failed to install for me. I redid it again and it perfectly laid over. So you just try it again to get to this update. You may not already see it. This might be, I might be the update to your update. Uh, and then that's the case, just refresh it and then you should be able to download it. Um, but it seems like some new features came into the synchronization, which kind of threw that off a little bit. But I wanted to point that out for everyone. So just in case you're having a little bit of a difficulty, it, it's fine, just retry it. Um, retry the install that install also is conveniently by just opening up the geforce experience it should want to do it natively by updating uh, if you run into issues i would be very interested to hear about that because i've never heard about that running into but the g-sync and the compatibilities for the display for as far as what the new features in the acer the xb27 3 gp the also xp 323U, also the ASUS VG27B, 
uh, the game ready driver fixes that are going to go ahead and jump into the 2080 Ti levels of the Tomb Raider for as far as the DirectX 12, which has always been has been a issue um, in its blue screen that occurred when the gamer would play for more than like five to ten minutes. Um, looking at Doom Internal, as this is a new game, there is a black flicker in the game for as far as that code that's displayed on top of there. Now I'm hoping that these are the new features and changes that they have hopefully really genuinely fixed, but sometimes some people run into some issues that are, you know, prolonging what is their gameplay because of these things. Leave a comment down below. You know, all of us united with information is the best source of information. Just, let, you know, let us know what your GPU is, your CPU, and what you're running. You know, that way we can kind of see the patterns. But looking at the DirectX 11 and the games that fell to launch and the image sharpening for as far as the NVIDIA paneling and the notebook graphics for as far as the corruptions that may occur after resuming the display after sleep, which I've always noticed has been an issue in general. I think that's probably another Windows issue that they haven't really been keyed into because not only does NVIDIA have this, AMD also has the same tech related issue. So I'm thinking that the common source here is if someone's watching this and they're like, dude, I don't even have any of these issues. So I'm on Linux and bam, there goes theory, thesis. At least until I can make my Linux build, which I've been wanting to do, which might come up pretty soon. I'm actually pretty excited. I just need to decide on what um, package I want to run. But looking at the situation for as far as what the important open issues are on the list, and Windows 7 is making it less and less, which is nice. Uh, Windows 10 is going to be more populated on this. But starting for as far as Windows 7, the H clone with the uh, integrated graphics and the processing as the clone source display setting cannot be changed from the NVIDIA control panel, which is kind of a bummer. But Windows 7, it seems like it's nice to see it's not a lot on that news. Now looking at the notebooks that make twice the list for as far as the H clone in the same exact situation that was above and then you're looking at the you know GeForce 1050 Ti the Max Q edition which is the screen corruption after waking up from a displayed off and again try just resetting the computer uh, rebooting from that situation a lot of these situations literally just occur from like going into a sleep mode which again common denominator is because of a uh, I would presume an OS outlet that we're utilizing as a common denominator um, now looking at the SLI inside of Doom Internal and the corruptions that occur when the game has been opening for the uh, Steam overlay. Jumping down a little bit to a new Battlefield, we see that Battlefield 5 and Destiny 2 make the HDR list for as far as the HDR enables the games to appear too bright, which is definitely a common denominator for a lot of games, and that's why I kind of like where sometimes we're, like for instance, a great company that does it really well is sony like they constantly when you continue to mess with the hdr every so often maybe like you'll get like this prompt where you want to recalibrate and it's really great especially if you're a streamer and you have a tv that's like yeah it looks great on my tv my display screen looks so great but then you look at your freaking playback and you're like oh my gosh this looks freaking horrible because the capture of that and the processor that's working inside that tv in order to make your pixels look amazing so um, it's kind of nice to have those calibration tests so you can kind of be the calibrator, uh, which is pretty cool. And not to say that most PC games don't have that. I'm just pointing out one like engine that works pretty well or a just a system that lets you calibrate. And I would love to hear other people that have great experiences too. But let's go ahead and hop back to those patch notes because we got benchmarks, ladies and gentlemen. Exciting benchmarks. Now that we push past the smoke and the mortos of the battlefield of HDR, we can see that we can have a monster hunter in the afflicted portion of the appear in game. So basically you're having artifacts kind of a not a fun situation. Call of Duty in the war zone in the freestyle does not work. On top of Forza 7 in the curbs, maybe in the blackened portions for as far as pixels. You can kind of see that that's made the list for several weeks nowadays. Now, when you look at the situation for a zombie army dead war 4, also making the list again for as far as the freestyle tab and the unselectables, and then Tom Clancy in the siege for the Vulcan G-Synced. For as far as what the game mode will be enabled, the flickers occur, and the situation of the workaround around that situation is getting the G-Sync or playing it on a different UPI than Vulcan, as they always allude to every week. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's definitely the end of our patch. We now have benchmarks, so let's get to it. I'm always excited for that. Alright partners, we're going to start with the good, the bad, and the ugly, and this is DirectX 12. For Time Spy in the 1080 department, this is last week's with before the Windows update. So if you have a chance not to update, uh, I would say don't and install this, and if you notice a performance improvement, then let me know, because I'd be really curious, because 
I haven't rewound my windows yet. I'm just waiting for them to update, which I know they'll probably end up doing very soon because I'm sure they probably know that because we're going to get into the bad before we get into the ugly. Check this out. This is after the windows update. So you already noticed it takes a hit. Now this is the ugly. I mean, that's not, that's not a good score. That's, that's horrible. I mean, it literally almost goes down 107 points. Uh, I mean, that, that's, that's at least a few FPSs right there. The trend continues with the good, the bad, and the ugly, as we can see that there's a report point for, again, post windows, not. This is like our old G score. Uh, and then you see the bad, which for 4K is taking a you know decent hit. And then you see the ugly. And so DirectX 12 does not like what's going down right now until maybe Windows rearranges a few pixels for it to work right. Um, for the FPS, it doesn't seem like you're going to get really good performance for as far as DirectX 12. Now, maybe they fix some issues that may have resulted in some of the reduction scoring, and it might have been a combination of Windows just giving a crappy layering um, base, which they tend to do a lot nowadays. Um, but I don't do Windows patch notes, not yet at least. I don't think I'd want to get into that hot mess. It seems like soup every day, and that's not a kitchen I want to be cooking in. Anyways, moving on past that techies and techettes, unless that comes to requests by popular demand, we're moving on to DirectX 11. So I brought it in a little closer. We're going to take a look at the Ultra, which is our hardcore 4K, so you can kind of see where the trend is going to kind of be. Now, again, this is us looking at the trends from the before the update, before Windows updated, and that's a pretty respectable score. Now, when you see the Windows update, you actually get some improvements, and you're like, well, well okay, hold on, this guy's been trashing like the Windows update, and now, you, now you're getting some solid improvements uh, decently. I mean, not really, actually. It's just two points, but I was just trying to make someone excited because, I mean, the rest of the news has just been kind of like, I'm sorry, it's been trending down. I want to have at least one that trends up. Uh, anyways, so as you can see, Windows does this, but then you install the new update, and you're just like, blah! Like, what the heck just happened? And you can see a solid reduction on just the graphics score. You know, the physics score takes kind of a hit, but the huge hit right there is literally the graphics score. And you can kind of see what ends up happening here is the graphics score gets improved between the Windows update just by like five points, which results into that physics uh, interlay with what's going down. But let's go ahead and look at like the extreme and we'll look in just the regular fire strike to look at the 1080p uh, extreme portions and the light versions. So interesting scores. We're looking at what was our last patch and 1400. That's a damn good score. I mean, yeah, that's a really good score, actually. And this is where it gets interesting, and this is where you see that NVIDIA's software writing is really good, and they're ridiculously good when it comes down to DirectX 11 and their 1080p department. Because, I mean, why the reason I sold Ultra first was because there's a lot of variance that you can kind of get with 4K, it can kind of go up and down. So a few points is kind of heavy, but not really. But when you look at points like this, and you're saying, okay, from a Windows update, we went from 1400 down to 13. 799 i mean dear gosh that's 201 points what the heck man but you can see right after when we update there's actually a decent improvement from this score closer look at this you can see that right now we're rocking a 13 815 i mean that's way better than what we had before with the the 99s we're gaining like at least 16 points which is not too bad but the graphics in that department are not you know the time Flux capacitor is not fluxing. It's not a good thing, ladies and gentlemen. You look at that, and the only common denominator, again, is Windows, and NVIDIA is trying its hardest to fight for you guys and gals. So if you see a few updates for Windows, I would say just wait at least one more, and that should hopefully iron it out. Uh, let's look at our final score for Firestrike. Briefly looking over at this, we're looking at the last patch. Then we look at the direct portion of the Windows update, which just reduces a little bit, not too bad, especially for Firestrike, that's pretty tame. I want to say, like, usually I'm dealing with about 25 to 50 variants. So when it goes to this, well, this is the new update. So it seems like what I would like to say is that either the graphics companies and the manufacturers of os's for what we operate ourselves on the x86 platforms for like the software and 
it would be, be Windows, which seems like the common denominator for a lot of issues nowadays for a lot of these. They need to be in more communication with each other. I feel like if NVIDIA hit up Windows or Windows hit up them and said, hey, by the way, we're doing this, because literally what ended up happening was the pipeline of the Windows update happened literally at midnight last night, and then I watched NVIDIA drop in, and I was like, hold on, let me just install the Windows update and see what happens, and then I can kind of test to see the variance, which was beautiful because I found out this huge conundrum where I feel like this update would have been really great, and maybe we might have saw some reductions a little bit in the 1080p department of DirectX 11, but dang, Port Royal and freaking like DirectX 12 just got beat up. I mean, it's not even funny. It's like, it's really apparently bad. And so, um, I would say, honestly, guys and gals, is this an update I should install? Maybe. I mean, if you want to do that, I would say definitely don't update your Windows. And then if you run into some issues, then, you know, give it about a week and then update your Windows, you know, kind of like play it out, see what ends up working out or revert back to the old settings of what ends up happening. Regardless, you're going to take a reduction this week uh, for as far as FPS, because it seems like the software is out of tune with itself being different outlets, not talking to each other to make something have synergy in the long run. Uh, but everyone have a very nice day i'm going to cut it off at this point in time and say thank you so much for your time if you're new to the network you can always subscribe it's absolutely free helps me as a creator and if you do today who knows maybe windows nvidia and amd and intel will reach out to me and i'll be their damn bridge i'll be like yo look you guys are changing this crap and you're changing this stuff like they can hire me and i'll, I'll work for them i'll be like their their merch the merch merc like you guys need to do this to merchandise this merchandise that you know the outlet dude but anyways everyone have a very nice day and i guess that was a little bit of a longer tangent of a would you like to subscribe today but i'll see you guys and gals in the near future for more tech related information in nvidia because it seems like there's probably going to be another patch pretty soon